All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen to week number 55 open Q&A. My name is Brian McLogan and welcome to another live stream. So as we uh, get going on here, talking about a little bit with a connection for video games and learning math. So um, definitely something that um, I think is a topic that a lot of students can um, probably relate to. And um, it's not really as much as you think, but we'll kind of get into that um, in a little bit. And then as always, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to answer your questions as I am every Sunday evening um, at 9 p.m. Again, in the description down below, you guys can submit your questions ahead of time. Those are the questions that I have. Um, those are where I select the questions that I'm going to handle on each and every one of these streams. And then hopefully, depending on how everything works out, we'll have a little bit of time to add in some open Q&A um, for you guys. So let's go ahead and get in. Looks like that. Um, well, good to see you forever thoughtful. Thank you so much. And Melinda and Abigail and Ethan and Justin. Awesome to have all of you on. It looks like my thing is just a little bit down delayed. Now it's coming in. Um, so hey, Brandon, everybody, thank you so much for joining in on this live stream. I'm very excited to talk to you because one, I was freaking out this weekend um, because I could not find my pen. And if you guys have maybe recalled on a couple of the um, videos that I have or a couple of live streams I had, sometimes like my daughters will come in and they will like hit one of the buttons or, you know, I'll be like muted or, you know, my lighting will be off because somebody like knocked over something. And so I, I was like definitely thought that one of my daughters grabbed one of my pens because a lot of times we'll play, you know, with the, on the stylus and stuff um, in, in my room. And so I thought one of them took, took it and moved it somewhere, threw it away. Whoever knows what happened with it. Um, but thankfully, I right before I was able to go live, um, I was able to find it and it was definitely on me. I put it in my um, sweatshirt kind of like hoodie pocket and kind of forgot that I did that. So <laughs> so thankfully we were going to do a non-math stream, but uh, we are definitely going to cover some math problems. I think I have about 12, um, a good mix of everything. So thank you again for everybody that submitted. And I do apologize um, if I did not get to your questions. I did have a lot of submitted and again, just to remember guys, I'm not able to do everything, um, you know, based on my you know, time constraints and everything. Um, I basically give myself like an hour to go ahead and prep and that's going, taking in all the questions, copying and get them all set up. So if I'm, if I'm not able to quickly identify, you know, what I need to do for your problem and like how I'm going to explain it, um, then unfortunately I just don't select it. You know, I'm just not able to cover everything for my live streams. Um, and a lot of, a lot of the topics that I have to just kind of look, you know, move past just because I'm not actively teaching or doing a lot of um, calculus or sequences and series. It kind of seems like those are, I get a lot of questions on, um, that I'm just not able to, you know, I, I just have to spend a little bit more time thinking and looking at them and like just making sure that I had the, um, explanation going. And, um, you know, a lot of those times I'm just like, I just don't have time to like think to my brain again, like what's exactly what I need to do and what I want to do to explain this best. So, um, that is it, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some video games. Well, hello, Christian and Victoria and Mizap and Piyush and C and Steven and James game over Bashar and random. Wow. Okay. Um, so Let's talk, what was I talking about, like video games and learning math? And no, the first time I wrote that out, I was like, oh, maybe I'll like call the title that. The first thing I was thinking of, oh, like maybe let's try to, maybe some people are going to think like I'm trying to create a, you know, trying to make math cool by playing video games and like making a video game so people can learn math. And while that might be a topic of conversation somewhere, somehow, um, that's not actually what I was referring to at all. So. Um, let me kind of give you a little bit of a backstory or kind of a little bit of an idea. And then I'll let you know some of my favorite video games, um, that I have played and, um, do play maybe eh, not really at all, um, but have played and I enjoyed. And then why I kind of, um, and what I've kind of learned about video games as well as how that connects to math. Um, because that's where I was like, looking back, I was like, oh, this actually makes a lot of sense at the moment. So the, um, 
so anyways, I kind of grew up in the 80s. You know, Nintendo was growing up. Um, and then we had, you know, Sega and everything else. So I'm very, not as old school as like the first Atari days, but pretty, you know, Super Mario Brothers, like that was like the big thing. I mean, I remember going to our friends' houses and we literally would just sit there and play video games after video game, after video game, after video game. Like it was very much, um, very much the rage that we would spend a lot of time um, doing that. But the, and then, you know, obviously I, I eventually, I never had a Nintendo, which I was very sad about and very, very much wanted. Uh, I ended, I ended up getting a Sega Genesis. That was my first video game console that I had. But kind of after that, um, I, once all like the, you know, PlayStation came out, I kind of got into sports. Um, I was very heavy into sports, like in high school. So I just didn't really have a lot of time, um, or just really used video games as like my downtime. You know, like a lot of people just use video games as like their downtime. I just never use, I was always in sports. I was very, very active. And so while I still played it with friends, um, I just really didn't kind of keep up with it. And same kind of thing with college. Once I started doing my math degree, doing math problems all the time, it was, you know, kind of going through like, I just never really spent a lot of the time with the video games, but definitely um, going through some of my favorites um, that we used to play, at least with like GoldenEye, where I remember playing a lot of, um, I did a lot of Street Fighter and Madden. I played a ton of Madden um, back in the day. And so all of this kind of comes into, one, let's, let's talk about what I'm thinking about with math. Like how does this connect to learning with math? How do video games and this idea of, the you know learning a video game or how to play a video game how does that connect with learning math well the one thing i noticed was you know i recently spent some time with my nephews and obviously they're younger they play a lot of video games and they're very good at video games and myself which i wanted to explain haven't not spent a lot of time in video games recently um, or in a long time i i was playing video games with them and i was horrible like really, really bad. Like kind of like if we were to sit together and like play a video game, you're like, dude, don't let like, just stop playing. Like it's not even worth it. Like you're that bad. Like I just literally, whatever I did used to be good at or could handle, I had lost everything that <laughs> any, any amount of talent that I had in playing video games had like been lost. Oh, and by the way, actually my first video game, I remember playing an MS-DOS on a computer was Digger and I love Digger and I actually just downloaded it on my phone because I got so excited to like play the game and they actually still have it. It's kind of, it's like a version of Dig Dug. Um, any like arcade people might know, remember Dig Dug, but this was Digger and it was an MS-DOS game and I loved Digger. But um, so the one thing I wanted to let you know though, and which kind of reminded me about this learning, the learning of the math was that you know, every single time we were playing a game, right? And you know, we, and this even brought me back to my childhood. Like I remember staying up like late, like throughout the night, like trying to like get past a certain level or, or get past, you know, um, you know, a certain person or a certain, um, you know, whatever may be the case. And we just spend so much time learning and learning about the game and trying to, trying to improve upon it. And like the cool thing was like the video game, like you die or, you know, but you always kept on, always getting another shot and you kept on working at it. And I think the connection that I kind of put to this with mathematics is, you know, that's exactly what that, that's exactly, you know, how we learn mathematics is we keep on going at it. We keep on attempting and trying and, and learning about our, learning about what we, um, what we can gain from each kind of failure. And I think what has been ingrained with so many students is they feel that like, if they don't understand it immediately, or they see that the person next to them understands it and they don't, then they're not a math person, they're stupid, they can't handle it, and they just give up or they don't keep on trying. And I'm like, like I get it, definitely being in class, like that you know, makes sense, like we're always comparing ourselves. But when I think about it in like a video game, I'm like, how, um, I just help for view. Hmm. How like crazy is it that like if we, you know, I, I never thought about that once. Like when I was sitting back with my nephews playing a video game with me that they, I'm like, oh, like they're better than me at the video game. Like I was like, oh, that doesn't mean I'm stupid or I can't play this video game or I'm not good enough. 
But I was like, no, I know I need to put in more time, right? I know I need to put in the practice. And also, like a lot of times that we were trying to do things, like if I kept on attempting and doing things, like I got better at it, right? And I and like that's a lot of times when we first learn a video game or we get a new game, um, you know, you, you put in the time, you put in the effort. And a lot of times it takes multiple, oppor- you know, multiple tries to to actually make something a habit and to actually understand something. And so really two things that I take away from video games and learning math is one, the time. You know, everybody thinks if they don't get it the first time that they can't do it or that it's too hard. And I think that's a belief that we got to look for somewhere else like video games and realize that, yeah, that's not the case, right? Because I don't think anybody plays a video game and once they, you know, die or lose or something, like they just give up and say, I'm not going to play this video game anymore. It's too hard. Like, no, you keep on trying. You keep on learning from things. And, and then the other thing is, you know, yeah, give yourself time, right? Because, you know, unfortunately with learning math, we do have, you know, a lot of you are in schools where you have semesters and grades and everything like that. So there is that little time period from there. But, but in the same respect, like give yourself some time to understand the mathematics, to understand the process. Don't feel that you have to understand things because the same thing is like, and also don't be comparing yourself to other people. Like you don't know how much time they put in playing that video game, right? You don't know how much time they, and how much maybe a better teacher they had for like the previous course or how much time they put in for their homework or whatever else. So don't compare yourself if somebody is doing better in your class than you and that somehow you're inferior. I never once thought I was inferior to my nephews because they were much, much, like what much, much better to me. Um, we were playing Fortnite, by the way, as well as, um, uh, GTA as well as Hitman. So those are some of the video games we were um, playing, but, um, and they're, and they're fun and I enjoy them. I just was not very good at it. Right. And which is a lot of people with math too. It's like, Oh, you know, it's like, and that's kind of how I was growing up. Like, yeah, I'm just not very good at it. Right. I mean, it's like, and that's, you know, you kind of get that disinterested and, and that's, I think on, on us as math teachers, um, to create a math curriculum that people enjoy and that also are not, um, feeling like pressured or penalized for not doing well, right? And that's, um, I think that's something important. That's that's on us as the as the teachers, you know. But I think from you guys, what you want to take, and I'm speaking to you guys as like the students, that um, you know, a lot of times I just think about learning learning mathematics as learning a video game, right? Give yourself time and keep on putting in the effort. Keep on putting in the work. Just don't give up. Just don't try it twice and say, oh, I can't do it. You know, so um, hopefully this was maybe a little beneficial of a talk and maybe you guys connected um, a little bit with what I'm saying, because maybe if you have a little bit of experience with the video games, um, (laughs) which uh, which unfortunately, just with my time now with doing the YouTube channel, still teaching inside the classroom, grading kids at home, cooking dinner. Um, video games are just, they, they don't, they don't make any time, um, for me. So, ah, well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, and I also do appreciate looking at all your games. I did, I was like crazy. I was thinking I would see a lot of commonalities on my YouTube channel. It's like what video games people were playing and what they liked, but oh my God, you guys had a ton of different video, like a wide variety. It was actually, I was very surprised on the variety of games that everybody is um, currently playing, or at least that they say is their absolute favorite. So very, very cool. All right. Well, Hamburger, Beatrice, AZ, Kangy, Ethan, William, it is time to get going. So, oh, and Aster Master said some video video games is such a good example to connect with work and life. I know a game that I played all through quarantine really gave me a new look on my education. Just to put in more work and not to worry. Yeah. I, I mean I I don't have a problem with any, you know, video games. It's just it it just always comes into like, you know, time, like what are you going to be utilizing your time, you know, with, and, um, I think there's definitely a lot of things that you can gain, uh, from using the video games. So, well, hello, Abigail. I saw you coming in. My my mom's school. <laughs> play video game. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, the, you know, I, 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 there's, it's kind of like the, um, yeah, video games is, you know, there's, I don't know. It, it's, there can be good. I think there obviously can be some negatives. And of course, if anybody wants to make a point, they're always going to focus on the negatives, right? And if anybody wants to make a point on the other side, they're always going to focus on like the positives. And I think with anything, guys, there's always going to be a balance, you know, in life. Um, and then also there's the argument of like that full focus, right? The people that go like full time playing video games, like, so either way, whatever. 
I'm talking about at least this understanding. I think this mindset was really where I wanted to get into with the video games and learning math. So hopefully this was a little bit helpful for you um, and from there. But now I am ready to get into some math problems. We got some good ones coming in today. And just remember, if you did join the live stream a little bit later, um, all of these video or all of these questions were pre-submitted. So you guys can go ahead and pre-submit your questions um, into me or you can pre-submit these questions um, to me using the Google form, um, which is down in the description uh, of this live stream, um, as well as for each and every week, I do go live at 9 p.m. And if you're looking for a little bit more help, um, then you can definitely also go to my Discord um, server, which is in the description as well. And there is a lot of people that are there helping and answering questions. So feel free to join the community, submit a question, help other people with their questions. Um, and actually that is something I'm gonna talk about next week, a little bit more in depth because um, I think it's definitely something that's very powerful for those for you guys as we are trying to finish off the school year and also like with quarantine to get a little bit more interaction you know some other people and learn a little bit more variety of the mathematics that uh, that you need help with so we'll talk about that a little bit more next week um, and then I'll also be doing a I have another um, and then also my memberships I'm doing extra uh, live streams right now on my Sunday evenings um, just adding other questions so if I don't get your questions here um, then I'm happy to kind of look over some questions there see at least that time I have a little bit more time to think through the questions and then I don't feel as bad going you know however many people on this stream um, you know them thinking you know watching me think through a problem after I've just talked about mathematics for like an hour it's kind of nerve-wracking at the end of the streams but um, but all right. So anyways, if you are interested in the um, some of the perks of being a membership, you can definitely go and take a look at that. But now it is time to get into some questions. So the first question came from I do not know, but they asked something about complex fractions. They were saying, um, I don't know, they just needed kind of help. So the way that I kind of look at the complex fractions is, you know, Typically, fractions, complex fractions are just too many fractions. You can see here, I have fractions in the numerator and fractions in the denominator, right? And it's just like too much. Now, typically with complex fractions, you can go and apply the operate, you can simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator, and then divide them. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But typically, like, if I have this many denominators, like, I wanna get rid of the fractions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by 12. Okay, because 12 is my LCD. That's my least common denominator. So when I multiply everything by 12, look what happens. I get a four, one fourth times 12 is three. One third times 12 is four. One fourth times um, 12 is three. And then one third times four is going to be four. And now you can see it's, now it's just one fraction, right? So by multiplying by the LCD, I reduce it down to one fraction. And then in this case, you can see it is a, seven over negative one, which is a negative seven. Now, in this case, I just kind of changed it up a little bit, just kind of swapped out some numbers, but it's the exact same idea. Now, all I did is made some, you know, algebraic expressions here. So now the LCD, instead of being 12, it's going to be X plus four times X plus three. Oh, I don't want to do that X, yeah, well, whatever. Um, so now when I go ahead and multiply everything, it's just a little bit more algebra you would need to do. But the main thing I want you to see is the X plus fours here, will divide out. That's gonna leave me with a two times X plus three. Over here, the X plus threes will divide out, leave me with a X plus one times a X plus four. Then down here, I don't know why I did something this crazy, but you would multiply, the X plus fours will divide out, leave me with a X squared plus one times an X plus three. And since that I made up this problem, I'm not gonna actually go through it, but I will show your student what exactly they need to do. And then here, the X plus threes will divide out, leave me with a X plus four. Okay, and that's basically it from there. Now you just need to simplify the numerator and the denominator. You know, you're gonna have a lot of distributed property going on, combine like terms and everything else. And that would basically be from there. Um, the next question is from Express Dude. Are, are signs able to be calculated without a calculator? And yes, that's why a lot of times we'll use the unit circle um, to understand the sign. So when we have points that are on the unit circle, so again, it has to be a point on the unit circle to use this definition. But when you have a point that is on the unit circle, that means it has a radius of one. So for instance, this point, square root of three over two, comma one half that has an angle of 30 degrees. So if I said, what is the sine of 30 degrees? 
then we could say, oh, the sine of 30 degrees is going to be the y coordinate, which is one half. Okay, so there you go, without a calculator. Now, typically, um, some students, then we also we get into using like the double angle, half angle, um, half angle for like sine, or the sum and difference of two angles for like sine of 15 degrees. So you can do that, it's just going to be a, you're gonna have to use now the, you know, different identities or different formulas to be able to solve that. Um, as far as getting into something like crazy, like sine of 31 degrees, I'm not aware of that off the top of my head of what you would be able to do um, without using graphing technology or um, without a calculator in mind. But for this one, you could just use the, or the sum and difference. So you can definitely do it there. All right. Uh, question number three comes from Stephen. Um, Stephen want to know graphs depending on their equation, the square root, the cube root, and the absolute value. I'm not really sure what Stephen you're asking, but somebody else asked about transformation. So I'm just going to kind of go off of um, this kind of question here. So if you have y equals square root of x, like you could create a table of values, but hopefully I'm not sure what grade you're in um, or what class you're even taking. But like in algebra two, we talk about that square root graph, maybe in algebra one now, it's been a while. But that is going to be your square root curve, right? So that's what the graph looks like. And you can do is create a table of values. Obviously you can't have negative values, right? Cause you can't take the square root of a negative number, but that's what that graph um, or that curve is going to look like. Then we have the cube root graph, cube root graph. There we go. So y is equal to the cube root graph. It's gonna look very similar. It's not exactly um, the same though. It kind of looks like this. It's kind of like a sideways S curve. Okay, so that's just what that parent graph looks like. And that's what you really need to understand these paragraphs. And then you have the absolute value graph, which Y equals absolute value X, which is kind of like what we call the V graph. So we have a sideways S graph, we have this little curve graph in there. So I would just recommend knowing these absolute value graphs. I'm not really sure the graphs down around the equation. Um, but I think you were talking about like, how do you know what the graph is gonna look like based on the equation. So that whereas it comes into the transformations. So you need to understand A, I'm not gonna write these down because these are a common definition, but A is gonna be a vertical stretch, um, a vertical stretch or compression, depending on how large it is, as well as a reflection about the um, Y axis, or X axis, I'm sorry. D is going to be a vertical shift up and down. Now the reason why I talked about A and D first is you can see these are outside of the function. Do you see that? Do you see how they're outside of this, right? A is outside and D is outside. That means they're vertical. They are vertical transformations. So they're going to impact a graph vertically. That's why the reflection is about the x-axis because that's a vertical reflection. And since the difference is when you have multiplication, that's gonna be your stretch or compression. Um, when you're adding or subtracting, that's gonna be shifting up or down. Now let's talk about the ones that are inside. Well, again, B is multiplication, so it's in the inside, but that's gonna be horizontal. So that's a horizontal stretch or compression. If B is negative, it reflects it about the y-axis. And then C is going to be inside, um, so that's gonna be your horizontal shift left to right. Notice it's the opposite of C though. So if C is positive, you're actually gonna be shifting to the left. If C is negative, C is negative, you're actually shifting it to the right. So it's kind of like that opposite. Notice that formula. So. Um, let's just kind of look at one here, y equals three, square root of x minus two plus one, okay? So example, if I had this graph, um, I would take this graph, I would stretch it, actually, you know what, let's just do this. Now let's just graph it real quick. So if I gave you an equation like this, right? And actually, you know what, let's just reflect it. <laughs> let's make it a negative. Um, so therefore, this graph is gonna be stretched, right? So it's gonna be stretched vertically three, it's going to be shifted two units to the right and one unit up, but it's going to be going down, right? Because it's reflected. So it probably looks something like that. Something like that, okay? So that's how you can see how that graph. So you have the reflection. Yep, it's being reflected. It's being shifted two and up one. And it's being vertically stretched. All right, question number four is, hi, Ms. I'm taking pre-calc. Do you subtract AP stats or AP calc? Um, I think it kind of comes in two ways. Um, two things you can think about. One, how are you doing right now? Like, do you really feel good with calculus or pre-calculus? Like you're understanding it and you're ready to like move right into calculus? Like that sounds like a natural progression for you. Um, or maybe are you struggling? And maybe you just, you know, a lot of times what I see with students have as their success in calculus is not so much on their 
on their ability of in pre-calculus, but it's really just their ment mental maturity. And, you know, not the maturity of like cracking jokes, but like just their, their maturity to be able to understand and comprehend the mathematical concepts. So I'm not sure what grade you are in, but if you're in like, you know, if you have an extra year, then I'd probably, you know, and you feel like you need a little bit more time, then I'd take AP Stats and then go into AP Calc to finish off your senior year. Um, if it's really just deciding, you know, it's your senior year, you don't know which direction to go, then you got to look into where you want, you know, what do you plan on doing with your life? <laughs> kind of a big question, right? But yeah, I mean, if you're going to, I think AP Stats is much more of a broad, um, you know, course that you would be more beneficial to on a much wider range um, of, you know, degrees and everything as whereas AP Calc is going to be much more, you know, centered into obviously a stronger math background, um, you know, kind of fields of study and degree programs. So hopefully that helps <laughs> for you. So, um, but yeah, I definitely look into the now, how are you feeling? And then where do you want to go? All right. Um, is there so all right so we have a solving equation so nobody wants to do decimals i always talk to my students about um like if we're doing like fractions i'm like nobody likes fractions so get rid of the fractions right go back up to this problem nobody likes fractions so what did i do i multiplied by the lcd and i got rid of all the fractions right i still had one more but i got rid of them well the same thing with decimals guys nobody likes the decimals so guess what you need to multiply by your decimals. So we need to move this over two units, right? Because this is going to be 0.32. So I want to multiply this times 100. So I'm just going to multiply everything times 100. So by doing that, out of 3,000 plus 32x plus 2,400 plus 40y. Oops, where'd my equal sign go? Oh, there's between 24 equals. Okay, now, all right, I don't even know what the, what is the question asking me to do? I don't even know what the student was asking. Okay, well, I'll just have to leave it at that because um, they didn't tell me what to do <laughs> and I just wrote it down for no reason. So make sure um, when you guys are submitting, like there's another one that's coming up, you know, are you graphing? Are we solving for X, right? Are we solving for X, for Y? Like, what are we doing? So hopefully, at least by showing them to multiply by 100, I got rid of the decimals, which was hanging them up, um, and we'll go from there. All right, I'm not sure what everybody is taking, but um, I haven't really got a lot of square root problems until tonight, so those are coming in. Um, so how do we solve the this equation? And we talk about the extraneous solution, which I think I'll talk about um, in another problem. So in this problem, guys, just kind of like what we talked about before, just use your inverse operations. Like we need to solve for P. Right? But the first thing we need to do is we the last thing we're going to be able to do is undo the square root, which would be squaring. So before that, we got to isolate this. So we got to undo everything that's happening to that square root of p. So you can see here, the first thing we're going to do is just multiply by the square root of 2. So therefore, I have a 6 square root of 2 equals the square root of p. All right, now we're going to square. Now we got to be very careful when we are squaring um, and solving because what happens with the squaring is we are we are potentially creating an extraneous solution. Now, in this case, it's not working, but we always want to make just get in the habit of creating this. And um, Leah, I'm not sure where you're getting confused. So if you have a question, then you can let me know and I'll look out for you. But I see you're confused and I'm not sure where I lost you because I haven't really gone into anything in depth right now. But let me know. Um, so we're going to square both sides and therefore we have six squared is 36. Squared of two squared is going to be two, 36 times two. You are right, Vendette, it is 72. Okay, now, again, just to, just to get in the habit, let's just verify this is correct um, and it's not an extraneous solution. So I have six equals, and I'll just plug it in, right? Remember, old school, you can plug in your answers here. All right, and then we could break that up into the square root of 36 times two. Divide by square root of two. Six equals six, square root of two over square root of two. And then those divide out, so six is equal to six. And voila. Um, who's even impressed with this? <laughs> like, but I need to, uh, uh, Joseph, I'm gonna come back to your thing, uh, but I don't wanna quit fully. Any advice? I need to step away from video games, but I don't wanna quit fully. Um, do, do school person I play yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that, Joseph. You know, let's talk about that. Um, that's a good question. Let's talk about balance. Life, 
school, and video games. I like it. Yes, and Spencer, your homework, due dates, you know, you can use it as a reward. Um, there's a couple different things you can definitely work into. Okay, um, here's another question that I have no idea what the student was asking, but the student gave it to me and I was like, hey, you know what, let me, I guess, I don't know, I guess I'll add it to it. So f of x equals 4x plus 3. I'm assuming the student wanted me to graph, so I'm going to treat this like the mx plus b form. Um, so m is going to equal your slope, right, which is 4 over 1. And then my b is equal to 3, which is my y-intercept. So um, in this case, we are just going to go to 3. 1, 2, 3. That is going to be my y-intercept, right? So there's a y-axis. That's where the graph crosses the y-axis. And then my slope is going to be, you know, you can think about that as like your rise over your run. But it's the change in the y-coordinates over the change in the x-coordinates. So between any two points, you're going to go up 4 over 1. So or the change vertically is 4, the change horizontally is 1. Now, when it's positive, that means it could be up 4 to the right 1, or it could be down 4 to the left 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, or down 1, 2, 3, 4, left 1. So you can see how that produces that exact same graph there. And voila. There you go. Okay, um, find the largest negative coterminal angle. I'm not really sure what it means by the largest negative coterminal angle because um, I guess they're talking about the negative, the largest. It wouldn't really be the largest negative. I mean, it's a small. I guess, yeah, you are considered smallest. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, because that would be the largest angle from on there. Got it, but you're getting smaller numbers. Okay, yeah. So anyways, coterminal angles. Now remember, coterminal angles are angles that have the same initial and terminal side. So here's a angle, and then you could say, well, that's also a coterminal angle as well, right? Because it has the same initial and terminal side. So they're coterminal. So how do you find coterminal angles? All you simply need to do is add and subtract two pi. So in this terms, we have 107 pi over six. So pi, let's just do two pi. So 2 pi um, is equal to a 12 pi over 6, right? Okay, so what that means is I could break up 107, 107 pi over 6 as 12 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, dot, 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 right? Because um, how many times could this graph go around? Like how many times does it need to go around until I'm going to get to 107? Well... I don't know. Um, now, I know that um, if we're going in 12, right? So let's see. Um, let's see. I can multiply by 8. So 8 times 12, 8 times 10 is 80. 8 times um, 2 is going to be a, is 8 times 2 is 12. So that'd be 12 plus 80 is going to be a, not, I'm not, not 80, 16. Um, so that's going to be a 96, right? So you could say, Eight times, um, eight times twelve equals ninety six, right? Leaving me with the remainder of eleven. So what I can do? So basically, what I'm doing, guys, is I'm just saying, well, how many how many rotations could I divide into one hundred and seven, right? So I could go into there ninety six times, and therefore I'd have a remainder of eleven. So dot 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 dot. What's going to happen here is that's going to give me a 107th link plus, let's see, a 11 over 6, 11 pi over 6, right? So you can add this. So that's going to get up to a 96 pi over 8. Whew, that's a lot, right? So you can add 12. You're going to do it eight times. That's going to give you 96 pi over 8. Leave me with an 11 pi over 8. Um, oh, wait, I need to go in the negative direction, don't I? So I'm actually going to be subtracting all of these. No, that's going to give me 11 pi over 8. Sorry about that. And then if I subtract it one more time, right? So that's the smallest number. And if I subtract it one more time, that's going to give me a 11 pi or a negative pi over 8. So negative pi over 6. Why am I saying over 8? Negative pi over 6 is going to be your answer. Because if you subtract it, so let's actually, sorry. 
So 107 pi over six is equivalent to, if you take, if you like, like all these revolutions, you can just get rid of. And so that's equivalent to 11 pi over six. So if you subtract another two pi, you're gonna get a negative pi over six. That'd be your answer. Um, Justin, your answer, your question just popped up right when I looked at the chat. So I'm just going to look at it. What efficient learning approach should I take when studying maths? Just finished pre-calculus and I'm about to hop on a calculus, but I'm not fully confident of my pre-calc yet. Um, I would definitely go back, go through all of your work that you did, practice some extra problems. There, I'm sure you have some books and some notes. Um, you might understand the concept. You know, one thing we talked about those video games is, you know, go back through, go back, you know, go back through the levels. Like you're gonna pick up more and more stuff every single time you do that. Um, and that was definitely one thing that I did. You know, I got good grades in math class in some math classes and I didn't really learn what I expected to learn or what I needed to learn. So a lot of times I had to go back and actually relearn some of the content that I was taught. Even I might've gotten an A on the test, you know, or B on the test or C or whatever, but I didn't really understand or, or didn't have enough practice, you know, it's like, it's like, um, have you also been playing a video game and like you get through the level and you're like, oh my God, how did that happen? Or you just get really lucky and you're like, oh, well I did it. And so like now you're at the next level or whatever. And you're like, you don't really care about going back. It's like, whatever, I did it, right? Well, obviously in mathematics, there's a little bit of a, a tail coming with you on that one because you can't fake, you know, you might be able to fake it on a certain level in a video game, but in mathematics, if you're continuing to go into the next course, that obviously can be an issue, right? So yeah, if you definitely feel like there's some things that maybe you understood or maybe you just don't have a great um, grasp on, then just go back, go back and check out the work. That's the cool thing that you have that opportunity with. You know, go back and just practice some of those extra problems. I think that would be helpful for you. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna get in the chat, guys. I'm almost done with all these math questions and I'll get into the chat with you or a little more. So this one, um, find f is zero. So the student didn't ask about one or I. So you plug in f is zero, right? You're just gonna say two, uh, oops. So that's gonna be square root of zero plus four, right? So like, that's it. Now this problem is gonna be the exact same thing. So if I say what's f of nine x squared, well, then you're gonna two square root of nine x squared plus four. Now there's nothing really we can do here um, in this case. So therefore it is, um, um, so that's it. Like you just plug it in just like we did before. Like you just plug it in for your variable x, right? You just replace it in for the variable x. Now the third problem they asked, which I, I forgot to add in, is like, what's the domain? So you gotta understand that everything under the radical has to be greater, greater than or equal to zero. So if you look at that parent graph, um, you can see that this graph is being stretched by nine and being shifted up four. So if we know that this is a parabola, right? And we're saying, all right, when is this graph gonna be greater than or equal to zero? Well, if here's the parent graph, y equals x squared, and if I now stretch this graph nine and then shift it up four, I realize it's always gonna be positive. So the domain here is going to be, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, the domain and range is going to be all real numbers, okay? So sorry, I forgot to add that into it, but there you go. Um, question number 10 says find the fifth sequence um, that is defined as follows. So this one's pretty awesome. Like sometimes that's difficult with geometric. And I did this one because I was like, hey, I can do that. Um, but a lot of times with geometric series and with arithmetic, uh, arithmetic series um, or sequences that a lot of times you have to either find the rule, right? Um, or you, you know, have to be able to use the formulas, which I just don't have in hand. I haven't taught it in a while. So that's why a lot of times I just don't cover the sequences and series problems just because it's been a while since I taught it. Um, so I'd have to go back and like refresh my explanation. Same thing with calculus. It's been such a long time, like two years, but still I just have to re, you know, it just takes a little time to a lot of those calculus problems. I may, you know, they can, they can get tricky really quick and you might look at it and you're like, oh, I know how to do that or I know how to explain that. And then it goes down a rabbit hole that you weren't expecting and you're like, oh crap. And with everybody taking so many classes all around the world that I get thrown questions on, um, it's, you know, not everything follows the same path and everything. But this one's not too bad because you're given the formula. And if you're given the formula for the sequence, um, then whatever you wanna find, you just plug in. Right, so if I want to sign a sub five, then just plug in five. So we're saying what's two to the fifth power, meaning two times two times two times two times two, right? And hopefully you can multiply that out 
and to get 32, if I remember correctly. 2 times 4, 32 is 8, 16, 32. There you go. All right, um, question number 11. This is from at DK. Um, it says, which order pairs are solutions to the inequality? Um, so those are going to be values that make the equation true. So all you have to do really here is these are what we call like test points. So just plug them in. So you could say like 0 is less than negative 4 times 0 plus 11. And you could say 0 is plus greater than 11. Well, nope, that's not true. Um, and let's just see, I could do 2 is going to be less than negative 4 times 3 plus 11. So 2 is less than negative 12 plus 11. So 2 is less than negative 1. That's not true. Uh, let's do negative 4 is less than negative 4 times negative 11 plus 11. Well, that's going to be a really big negative number, right? Um, so negative 4, well, it's not a really big negative. It's negative 44 plus 11. So negative 4 is less than, let's say, negative 33. Well, that doesn't work. And then again, just to make sure I didn't do any math incorrectly, let's just check the last one. Um, so this is negative 1 is less than negative 4. Oh, come on. Negative 1 is less than negative 4 times a 5 plus 11. So negative 1 is less than negative 20 plus 11. So negative 1 is less than negative 9. Uh-oh. Where's my math? Oh, that's a positive. Come on, Mr. McLogan. Did I catch it? Yeah, there you go. Thank you so much. Yeah, negative times a negative, guys, is positive, right? Good job, Emily. I didn't see your quote, but yeah. How, how did you plug 2 into y? Um, so I'm just replacing. So these are, I don't know. Why did I plug 2 into y? Oh, I did. Did I plug? Oh, 3, 2. Well, you're right. I messed that one up too. Dang it. <laughs> well, that wasn't the answer anyways, but I guess I should fix that. So, all right, fine. Yeah, I messed those up. Thanks, guys. So that's your x coordinate. That's your, that's your x coordinate. That's your y coordinate, right? So 3 and 2. Okay, so did I do these other ones correct? Ah, man, what's wrong with me? I did these all correct, all incorrect. All right, I'm just gonna go back to the whole problem. This is what happens, guys, when you do math problems on Sunday nights. When you've been doing math, actually, already day, I was preparing my lessons for like this upcoming week. So, all right, let's just kind of go back to this. That is your x-coordinate, that is your y-coordinate, right? That is what you're plugging in. I obviously did the zero one correctly, so I don't know why I erased that, but whatever. And we're just going to see which one of the equations are true. So zero is less than 11, not true, right? So let's do the next one. That's x and that's y. So three is less than negative four times two plus 11. So three is less than, I was thinking like, why wouldn't three be an answer? Um, so negative four is that's going to be eight. 8 plus negative 8 plus 11 is going to be 3. That is not true, right? It has to be less than or um, less than not equal to. So that one doesn't work. That one doesn't work. All right, so now let's do this. Negative 11 is less than a negative 4 times negative 4. There you go, plus 11. Is less than negative 4 times 4 is 16 plus 11. There we go. Thank you so much, guys. 27. Ta-da. Um, zero is less than 11. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What? Is true? Oh, so there's multiple. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> that one's true too. Yep. Zero is less than 11. You are correct. So I guess this is one of those like multiple ones, which order pairs. Yeah, it is multiple. Yeah, it is plural. So dang it. So I guess we got to check that last one then, don't we? All right. Let's check the last one. Um, so we have our y. I got to go to bed. <laughs> Jeez, oh man. So negative, I'm like messing up on the on the algebra one problem. Um, so we have five, that's my y corner. So negative four times negative one plus 11. Okay, five is less than, let's see, that's going to be a positive four. Come on, Mr. McClogan. Four plus 11. So five is going to be less than 15. That one works too. 
Yeah, okay. So all of them are except for two, three. Cool. All right, um, last one, or not last one, but this one is, um, student was asking for, um, so given PM is three X plus two, so let's write that in there. So three X plus two and MN is X plus four. If PN, so if PN is equal to 18, find the values of X and PM. Okay, so on this problem, we're gonna use the segment addition um, postulate, which basically says that three X plus two plus a X plus four is equal to an 18. Okay, right, because this plus this, if this whole distance is equal to 18, then you add the two up to give you 18, right? So therefore that's a four X plus six is equal to an 18, subtract to six, four X is equal to a 12, divide by four, divide by four, X is equal to three. Now, that's not the question, right? The question doesn't say solve for X. It says find the value of X and of PM. So PM is equal to three X plus two. So therefore I'm gonna do three times three plus two. So three times three is nine plus two is going to be 11. Ta -da. All right, next one is four square root of X minus two. So again, this is one, another one of those um, uh, square root equations, right? So we got to check for extraneous solutions here, guys. So in this case, what I'm going to do is add the two to the other side and four square root of X is equal to two. Divide by four, divide by four. <sighs> so I have square root of X is equal to a one half and then we will square both sides and X equals one fourth. Now again, we just wanna make sure we like double check, make sure this is not an extraneous solution. So let's just go ahead and you know do a check and plug this back in. So square root of one fourth minus two is equal to zero. Now again, um, so whenever we're having this square, whenever we're squaring both sides, just make sure you're checking for any kind of extraneous solutions. So the square root of one fourth, you can break that up into the square root of one over the square root of four minus two equals zero. Well, the square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. So therefore it's four times one half minus two is equal to zero. And therefore it's two minus two is equal to zero. And zero equals zero. And voila. All right, um, whew. so now let's go ahead and open into, I will, uh, I'll be online for a little bit here if you guys do have some other questions. Um, I don't know if my brain can handle some more math questions, but you know, whoever. If you have something maybe good that I feel, feel, uh, feel fine about um, being able to answer, and I'll be happy to kind of go through this, but let's talk a little bit about the, so one of the ways I guess I wasn't really thinking about this direction to kind of go through, um, go through is like, which is actually kind of an important thing, like video, I did just say video games and math, right? <laughs> so um, let's kind of talk about like maybe some negative, the parts on the video games, because I think there is definitely a plus, you know, of that, the positive side with the video games, but let's talk about maybe one of the negative. And I think one of the negative is our attention span um, and our time. So yeah, definitely one of the reasons that I, do not play video games is just the time, the investments, right? Um, if I am going to, if I need to relax, um, then it's usually just going to be watching either some videos online or watching some TV, you know, with my wife. Like that's just how uh, we kind of like relax. Um, a lot of times when I'm driving, you know, I'm driving, I'm not playing video games when you're driving, but, um, or, or a lot of times like just taking a walk and getting some silence, you know, reading a book. Um, those are just things that I do to kind of calm down. I've never really had um, or used video games as like a, a stress reliever or just a like, just a relax, you know, and just for downtime. However, I know that's what a lot of people use video games, you know, for. It's just one of those two relax and just kind of escape, you know, everything they're kind of going through. And, but that can be also an issue, just like anything in your life that you use um, to either escape or just, you know, just to, to wind down with. Um, because yeah, they are very, you know, addicting and they can take up a lot of your time, right? And um, obviously if you're going into professional status, like professional sports, Right, people are like, oh yeah, professional sports crazy, but it's like, hey, you know, if like those people are focused, they put in all that time and energy and whatever, and like I know there's a path with, you know, playing video games and everything else, esports and everything, but um, but yeah, I think the I think for the majority, 
of people, and we'll talk on a broad topic here or for a broad population. Um, I think as far as identifying the, uh, as far as the balance, I think it, you know, it just kind of comes into, you know, understanding what it is you're trying to accomplish each and every day, each and every week and what you're, you know, what you want to do. Um, you know, like there's a lot of things that I sacrifice for, even though I don't want to do them. Um, or, but just because I know what I want to do, you know, with those, like one of the things that I wanted to do for the, you know, this channel was to do these live streams. Cause I, I felt like there's so many of my videos that I have, I really wanted to have an opportunity to, you know, be the guys, but yeah, this is, you know, this is a very time intensive stream, right? I mean, it's roughly about an hour um, of, of my day that I'm spending, you know, with you guys. But, but, you know, I do that because this is, it's, it's a time well spent, you know, for me. And I think for video games, if you think about like, Hey, I really need like an hour, you know, or plus <laughs> to, you know, play the video games. Like think about what are the things you need to get done? You know, what are like, I think I spend a lot of people like treat that as like a reward and everything. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's, that's a great way. It's going to work for some people. It's not going to work for others. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to do is like, think about what I want to get done and just make sure a lot of times I get those things done. Like that's kind of my motivation to get them done. So therefore I can just enjoy, you know, the rest of my day. Like my Sundays can be pretty hectic. I have a lot of things going on, you know, for these Sundays. Like I have school the next day. Um, we don't have it tomorrow, but a lot of times when I'm doing these streams, I mean, I have a like papers a grade, you know, pr planning for the next week. Like I have a lot to prep for. And so it, it becomes a little bit overwhelming if I don't have that stuff done before I go live. And that's why a lot of times, you know, I want to look forward to doing these live streams and not having a lot of that stress. And so that's why, you know, I just make it a duty to like get my stuff, get the stuff that I need to get done first. And then if I wanted to play video games, then I'll play video games, you know, or if I want to go live, I'm going to go, well, I go live every, every week, but it's like, I think it just, it kind of depends on what you want to get out. Um, if you know, out of each and everything. And you know, if playing video games, a lot of times with people, it's just like, they're, you know, it's their social elements as well, you know? And I don't think there's ever going to be a, a right, um, right answer or anything that I can say that's always going to meet a, um, that's gonna be right for everybody. But I think it's just for, I think the best thing I could look into is like, why are you playing and are you getting what you need to get done? You know, like where you want to go, what you want to do, um, is that impacting you positively or negatively? And if you can be honest with yourself and you feel it, that, that is negatively impacting, um, your ability to get things done that you know, you need to do then yeah, you might need to maybe st dial it back. You know, like a couple things I remember doing um, when I was a kid, I used to play video games. Like, you know, once I got my own console, I never had a, like I used to always go to my friend's house. And so that was always cool because like, I, you know, you could just like back in the day, like we just didn't always go, over, like we would go over to his house all the time. But like, I just couldn't like, if I wanted to play video games, I just wouldn't like wake up and go to his house, right? So one of the things I did was when I got that console, though, I was like, oh my God, I can play whenever I want to. Like, this is crazy. And like, I would just binge playing, you know, video games. So one of the things I did just to kind of make it a little bit more difficult for myself, I just put it in the, um, I can't remember, I think I like put it downstairs, which I didn't really go to, you know, or put it in a room that maybe you're, you know, not as, you're not going to frequent. Or sometimes, you know, I just did some things where it's, where it just made it a little bit more difficult for me to go there. So a lot of times, um, so therefore it wasn't like this easy access. You know, I think the, the thing with the phones, people like, which is so difficult, it's like, it's so, it makes it so easy for us to like hop on our, our phone and like play a game, right? Which I do as well, um, which is technically like playing video games, you know? And so I think if there's a, if you can maybe even create some obstacles, um, then, you know, when you want to, think about playing a video game, it might not always come into like your, um, to the first thing you're like, oh yeah, that's definitely what I want to do. But you know, it's, uh, you know, there's a little bit more obstacles in your way. Um, it might help you kind of break apart from depending on that. If that is something that you have decided is going to be, and Hey Lonzo, well, thank you very much for the super chat. I very much appreciate that. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Um, all right. So that is it on me on video games. I don't know, sure. Brian, do you watch Dragon Ball Super? Um, I do not um, watch the Dragon Ball Super. I even even a lot of TV. I used to. I mean, my um, besides between my family and school and YouTube and stuff like that, my 
I don't have a lot of my downtime. Even a lot of my down, like even today, I was creating my my content for my online course as well as a um, for my online course and um, and for school. So you know, I mean, that was like my downtime today, <laughs> like, and that's what I did. Um, so yeah, it was even just like more math. So oh, and as an avid gamer, I'd advise to avoid multiplayer games with toxic communities. But see really like Life Strange. Yeah, it's great to relax there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, you know, I mean, like the multiplayer games, it's, yeah, yeah, it's just kind of tough. Like I, um, I know there's like the social aspect, which I, you know, I like for a lot of, um, you know, people. But yeah, I think a lot of the, when you have in those toxic communities, then you're doing more harm than good, you know, when, and that's kind of like, you know, if you're watching, you know, same kind of thing, if you're watching TV or whatever else, and it's just like, it's putting, you know, even on like YouTube or whatever else, like if it's giving you, um, a bad, the, like, if it's making you more upset or like having other issues, like that's not good for you. Like watching the news. Like I don't watch any of the news. I like very rarely am I like, I'll check in with news, but like every single time I feel like I'm watching the news or anything that's like very much related, like it just puts me in a bad mood. I don't want to be in that mood, um, throughout the rest of my day. So I avoid all of watching a lot of like heavy news. Um, or commentary on it just because it's not worth it to me to go through my day, you know, worrying or complaining about a lot of the, a lot of the stuff. So I get my news from different sources, you know, like from online, just like reading, but I prefer that than a lot of like the kind of like clickbait, like, you know, read this article or, you know, watch this video clip. Like it doesn't, or, you know, even just on network TV, like I just, it's, it doesn't serve really much of what, um, you know, what I want to, when I want to just like escape, right. I just want to relax and like enjoy myself. Um, I don't want to get, uh, all pent up, you know, with like different emotions of what's going on out there. Um, but yeah, oh, and I, I have a pre-calculus course, which I, I run online. In addition to teaching, I opened up the pre-calculus course at the beginning of this year. Um, it is closed this year. It is closed for the rest of the year, but I will be, opening it back up, um, again for next school year. So that's something we'll, we'll definitely be talking about. You'll definitely hear it on my channel. You know, it's for people that are interested in taking pre-calculus, um, with me, then, uh, that's one thing that I'll be kind of offering. I don't have anything else for other courses at the moment, but that is definitely something I'm looking into expanding my footprint in. Uh, if you don't mind, how do you make money? Um, well, I am a teacher, <laughs> so that is number one. Um, number two, I'm also a real estate agent, so that is number two. So I've been a, I've been making YouTube videos since 2010, and I've been a real estate agent since 2011. Obviously, YouTube is now taking up a lot more of my time as well as my kids. So ever since once I had kids, I kind of stepped away a little bit from the from the t um, from the doing the real estate, just as much as like as as much I did, I used to hustle crazy amounts teaching and doing real estate. Uh, and then YouTube, I just record my, you know, re videos, but now YouTube is taking up a little bit more of my time and attention. Um, so therefore that's what I've decided to really kind of focus a little bit more on uh, like after school hours, the, and, um, and yeah, then there is YouTube ads. That's basically when you guys get served ads, which it looks like YouTube just keeps on sending more and more ads, which I do apologize um, for, because it gets a little bit annoying even for me. Like, I feel like sometimes I get like multiple ads. I'm like, wow, I guess they found me as to be like the ad sucker, because I'll get like three ads in a row before I watch a video. I'm like, geez. So I um, apologize for that. But yeah, the ad revenue is the other way that um, YouTube makes it. And then I have my YouTube memberships. Um, which for people to subscribe to my channel and kind of like support me in that way. And then also I sold my online course for um, for this year. So that was another thing that I do. Um, Nelson, do you watch football? I do. Um, I say I do, because I used to be a pretty big football fan, but I think the I think the sport is going through some serious issues, not the COVID related, but um, just, uh, just the, a lot of different issues. So I am a Michigan state, um, fan as well as a Detroit lions fan, as well as Jaguars fan. Cause I'm from Jacksonville. Well, Hey Chris. And, um, so yeah, that is, um, those are the, um, those are my two fans, but it's like even hard. Like I, like I used to like be an avid, like wanted to watch every single game. And like when I missed a game, like I would get very upset 
And football is just like, it's kind of lost my viewership. Like, you know, I'll catch a game if I catch a game. If I don't catch a game, I, I'm not hurt. Like, it's just, it's not as exciting of a sport um, that it used to be, in my opinion. I think it's been dragged down. I think it's gotten too technical as far as a lot of the calls and flags and like replay. Um, and then it's just dragged on. It just takes too long. Um, so I think, I think there's some issues definitely with football. So I do also you know, play rugby. Um, and ever since I played rugby, I looked at football in a completely different light and it's never been able to match up to, to rugby. So the, um, I mean, I still enjoy it. still watch it still go to games and stuff like that, but yeah, that, uh, all right, Adam Pepper. Yes. <laughs> baseball. I love baseball. Uh, or at least I love baseball. Um, uh, watching it. Cause I used to grow up watching the tigers all the time, but yeah, I play baseball, um, uh, most of my life. And so, yeah, I really appreciate, really appreciate the sport of baseball. And, uh, but yeah, just, uh, watching the tigers. I always like to check up, but again, same thing. Like I'll enjoy going to a baseball game or a minor league game, like enjoying, enjoying that aspect of it. But like, I can just catch on the, you know, the highlights. I just, I don't, it's just, you know, baseball again is a very long game. So taking my time out, um, to go to a game, it's just not really important. I'm not really a big, like go to, um, go to the stuff or go to the games, you know, kind of idea. And obviously with COVID that's changed a lot. Um, I live in Jacksonville, Florida, Jack. Um, well, thank you so much. Ooh, great. You said, well, thank you. You are very welcome. And lots of, to get, I have gotten recognized in public. No, I have not gotten recognized since I've been wearing my mask. So that maybe is a good or a bad thing. I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, there's definitely been some people. It's kind of like the awkward, like, do you teach math? And I'm like, yes, I do. And then they're like, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it's happened a couple of times. Not, uh, not like any kind of like LA celebrity style um, sightings. But yeah, just a couple of people have been... Uh, um, I guess willing to like reach out and be like, hmm, I think that's the math guy. And what did he say? What did that person say? Um, oh, Watchdog said, what do you mean you want to teach math? Well, kind of like going into the video games that I talked about before, like I wasn't really super interested in math. Like I wasn't really good at it, but I liked it. You know, it's kind of like, like video, like you're playing a video game, like you're not very good at it, but you kind of like it. And I was like, hey, well, if I'm going to play something, I might as well just go into that. And that's what I decided. Like, I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and so I was like, well, I got to pick a, you know, pick something I want to teach. And then uh, yeah, there you go, Lucas. Um, and um, so, yeah, I had to pick something. And even though math was not like my strongest of suit, it was uh, it was definitely um, it was definitely a course that I was, you know, had I enjoyed you know, and, and it wasn't really even until further, a couple more classes into calculus, um, that I got in, but, oh my God, I forgot guys. I have my technical stream for my members and I am late. So thank you so much guys for chiming in, but I have to go over to the member stream to go ahead and wind down, make sure there's no any questions over there. Uh, but otherwise guys have a great tonight. I will see you next week at 9 PM. All right. Cheers. Oh, let me go and use that one now. No, there you go. No, it's not working.